Hey guys, so on the 306 Fox body on the 95, we just got a Cobra intake on it. We're gonna try out a Phenolic spacer. I've got this BBK spacer, I've had it for a while. I think it's time I'm gonna try it out. I'll be taking the intake off to do a modification to it, but I'm gonna take it for a run down the highway. Cold start, gonna go out on the highway for a few miles, get everything up to operating temperature, and then we're gonna come back and do a you can see this is basically room temperature. We'll do a uh, temperature test to see what it is. We'll put the phenolic spacer in. And we'll do the same trip, come back and see, are they worth it? Did they really, you know, are they gonna offer five or 10 degrees in a temperature uh, uh, difference? So I'm really curious to see how hot it's gonna get. Here's what we got, BBK Performance Phenolic intake manifold spacer kit part number 1506 and what does it say here intake manifold spacer kits are one of the most affordable bolt-ons for your modern muscle car these spacer kits increase power by reducing the transfer of heat from the lower to upper intake manifold in turn producing lower inlet air temperatures which result in the added horsepower and the ability to add more timing advance with less detonation well Let's see what it does. It comes with a gasket and the hardware as well. So we'll go for a spin and uh, see what happens. Stay tuned. So I'm gonna go for a few miles down the road, turn around and then we'll uh, check the intake temperature when I get back. Let's see what we have for a temperature. I just pulled it into the garage. Hundred eleven degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll go right down the center of it. Hundred and twelve, hundred and eleven, hundred and nine, hundred and ten, hundred and eleven. I guess as we get to the throttle body. That's where the air is obviously cooler. We're at 104. So as we work our way down, it goes up. As we get to the closer to the engine, we're at that 120 right there. 100 and go down a little further. 126. That gives us a uh, a good baseline what we what we can expect. And I'll go on the same trip after I put that phenolic spacer in. Let's see how many degrees this is good for. Because, like I said, I already have it. May as well use it. Okay, guys, here's where I'm at. Got the intake off. Um, the BBK bolts. Check it out. They, uh, I think these are my original ones. Yeah, that's not it. I got some I got some bolts from a uh, Explorer intake, and on the ends with the with this on here, they seem to be about the right length. Once I put the gaskets on, I can always trim them just a bit, or actually I'll put a, a washer in if I have to. But the longer BBK bolts that go up here. They don't stick out very far. So once we put the two gaskets in here, it'll be even less. And I don't want to screw up the uh, threads of the lower intake. I might get some uh, steel rod and make a couple studs for it. It's likely not going to be as good as a actual fastener. But, or if I could find some bolts that are a little longer. That's going to be tough though. These are... These are actually pretty long bolts and for them to, uh, for anybody around here anyways, to have something that's this long, if it was about a, a quarter inch longer or, you know, close to that, we'd be in business. So tomorrow I'm going to hunt for some bolts or do something. So I got basically, it's like a grade eight strength threaded rod to make the uh, two center bolts for the intake because the original ones didn't work. We'll reassemble everything, take it for a spin. So we're gonna do our temperature test and then 
So here's what I did with my bolts. These are some from an Explorer intake. They worked out perfectly. I made kind of a stud for the lower part here. I can't remember if the original ones were like this or if they were actually a bolt, but I made it like a stud here. And then this guy, this is actually uh, the threaded rod, but I welded a nut on top and uh, ground it down so it looks like a bolt. And then there's one underneath the cover here. I had to make that one, I had to grind it down thin so it would clear the cover because the original one is very thin. Just like I said, because of clearance for that cover. So Explorer bolt, homemade bolts, studs on the short ones, and like I said, back to another Explorer one that seemed to uh, make everything fit really nice. Okay, I just took the car for a spin. As you can see, the phenolic spacer is now in there. Let's see what we're going to get for some numbers. I think we're at about 105 at the throttle body. 111. 110. 112. 13. You know what? Like, I think we're around 128 down here. So... Yeah, we, we do see a reduction. You know, not so much at the throttle body. I thought it would have been less here. This is about the same. I'll just come around. So up top is about the same. 111 to 113 or so. But as I get down to the base here, I thought I was, well, yeah, about 128. Well, I know these work. I know they do. But I didn't see any gains whatsoever. You know, I just I just don't see it. I just don't see it being worthwhile. Like, let's face it, if you have a carburetor and you have trouble with your getting vapor lock in your carburetor and your fuel is getting, you know, just too much heat, a phenolic spacer can help. But, shit, it's hot. Like, I wouldn't want to... I can touch the damn thing, but I don't want to keep my hand on there forever. And you know, if you think about it, just look at the sheer mass of this intake. Once you get heat into something like this, you just can't get it out. Like, it, it takes time, it, the, the motor has to be off, but just the sheer mass of this will allow it to hold heat that much easier. That's likely the big problem with this situation. If you had a smaller intake, you know, definitely less substantial in size and mass, it would likely work a lot better. They likely do work, but this test, they just it just didn't work. I was expecting it to be a few degrees less. So that's my thoughts, guys. That's my thoughts on this phenolic spacer. So yeah, in this test, it failed. Not saying under certain under certain conditions, you likely wouldn't get heat into the upper intake as fast, but uh, in this case, if you're daily driving a car, if it works, I just didn't see the benefit. So I think there is definitely a time and place for a, a, a spacer. You know, they will add some plenum volume where needed. That could come in beneficial with the carbureted application. Things that I like spacers for that I've used them before is usually to get clearance on valve covers and throttle body cables, like throttle cables. Check this out. As you can see, I've got a decent amount of clearance here, but I still had clearance before I put the spacer in. And, you know, on a, on a, my 86, to get everything under the stock hood, I use spacers to raise up my throttle body 
to clear the valve covers, but I had a lower intake elbow to clear the hood compared to the one I had. It was a big juggling match. And, you know, maybe, maybe because of the air coming into the carburetor or the throttle body or upper intake plenum to help cool it, maybe that phenolic spacer will kind of lower the upper limit of what the temperature might be. So let me know what you guys think. Have you ever used phenolic spacers on EFI intakes for more than just a spacer? Did you see gains in reducing heat in the upper plenum? Uh, let me know what you're thinking. I, I just didn't see any uh, heat reduction benefits on this, especially for a you know a daily driven street car. But man, I was expecting more out of this one. You know, not not big numbers, but maybe five or six degrees, if not, maybe a little bit more, but anyways, guys, let me know what you're thinking, your thoughts on phenolic spacers. I think maybe they'll work better in carbureted applications, but uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say, and thanks for watching. We will catch you in the next video. Cheers.